Let's expand our use of trigonometric functions beyond the unit circle to any point in coordinate space. Let's take what we know about the unit circle and expand it. Now we remember in the unit circle this radius, the distance from a point to the origin, is always 1. So that simplified our sine, cosine, and tangent ratios on the unit circle because r was always equal to 1. The sine was y, the y coordinate, the cosine is the x coordinate, and the tangent is just y over x. Now if we want to expand that beyond the unit circle, the same trig ratios apply no matter how big the triangle is. The only difference is, instead of r being a nice convenient 1, sometimes r is another number. And we use the Pythagorean theorem to find r, because it is a right triangle. r is always going to be the square root of the x coordinate squared plus the y coordinate squared, regardless of where it is. Also, don't forget r is always going to be a positive number because it's a distance. It doesn't matter where the point is, and r is always going to be a positive number. And try the point 3, 4. So the point 3, 4 is 3 to the right and 4 up from the origin. Therefore, it has a radius of the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, the square root of 25, which is 5. So if we wanted to find the sine of the triangle formed by the coordinate 3, 4, so r is 5. And the sine is going to be the y opposite over hypotenuse, r, y over r. In this case, it's going to be 4 over 5, 4 fifths. Now let's just leave it as a ratio for now. You can also make that 0.8, of course. The x is 3. Cosine of the angle is x over r, adjacent over hypotenuse. It's going to be 3 over 5. And finally, the tangent is y over x, so that's going to be 4 over 3. So we just found the sine, cosine, and tangent of this angle alpha formed by the point 3, comma 4. Now if we want to go beyond quadrant 1, we're going to need to use what are called reference angles. And when an angle is drawn in standard position, it creates another angle called a reference angle. And a reference angle is the acute, acute being less than 90 degrees, angle formed by the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. So let's look, for example, at this second block. This angle, 120 degrees, is in quadrant 2. 120 degrees, by the way, in radians is going to be 2 pi over 3. That 120 degree angle, when we're creating the right triangle and we're evaluating a point, is not really part of that triangle. The reference angle is. And the reference angle is the acute angle formed by that 120 degree angle and the x-axis. And that acute angle is 180 minus 120, or 60 degrees. And that's what happens in quadrant 2. Now look over here at what happens in quadrant 3. Let's say we have a 240 degree angle. Well, if we were just going to try and evaluate this point in purple, we draw this little right triangle here, and notice we don't have a 240 degree angle that's formed in this right triangle, but we did have 240 degrees of rotation to the point. Well, the reference angle is the acute angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. That acute angle, in this case, is 180 plus 60 degrees. So 60 degrees is the reference angle. Similar kind of thing happens in quadrant 4. In quadrant 4, we have a 315 degree angle, which by the way in radians, what would that be? It would be 7 pi over 4. This 315 degree or 7 pi over 4 angle, if we were going to draw this right triangle, it would look something like this, and that 315 degree angle would form a 45 degree or pi over 4 reference angle. Because it again, it's the acute angle formed by the terminal side of the angle and the x-axis. In this case, it's 45 degrees. So the key thing to know here, a reference angle is sometimes needed when you're dealing in other quadrants besides one, as the acute angle formed by the terminal side of the given angle and the x-axis. So let's look at a problem in quadrant two. Here's the point negative 5, comma 8. 
and we want to find the trig ratio formed by negative 5 8. Well, the angle alpha is really this big obtuse angle, so we will be finding the trig ratios at that angle, but to do that we're going to need to use this little reference angle here. And again, the reference angle, the acute angle formed by the terminal side of this big angle. So step one is we're going to find r, and r is going to be the square root of negative 5 squared plus 8 squared. Don't forget a common mistake, taking negative 5 squaring it and getting negative 25. Remember we're talking about distances here, so these are always going to be positive values. So r is the square root of negative 5 squared plus 8 squared. That's going to be the square root of 25 plus 64. So r is the square root of 89. So the sine of alpha then is going to be y over r. And y, in this case, is 8. It's always good to label this triangle. X is negative 5. So if we want to find y over r, it's going to be 8 over the square root of 89. If we want to find cosine, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, x over r. So that's going to be negative 5 over the square root of 89. I'm leaving it as the square root of 89 because that's an exact number. We can always take that and round that using a calculator later, but for now we want to use the exact values. The tangent is y over x. In this case, it's going to be 8 over negative 5. So we've just found the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle formed by the point negative 5, 8 using that reference angle.